yeah, guys, welcome. Like I said, hopefully you're enjoying all of your events that you're referring to, that you're checking out for Uplink today. Make sure that it's all good here. Uh, anyway, let's just get this rolling here, <clears throat> just to have a little background thing, just to show, because we're going classic today, we're also going a little bit modern, talking about various different uh, fighting games, and you have the skills that you need to be decent or good in them. Okay. Can't bring up the chat for whatever reason in my... Can't bring up the chat in my tablet here for whatever reason, it's weird. Trying to get the actual panel to display on my tablet, just so I could see the chat on my uh, tablet. But yeah, so the reason why we're playing Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo here and why you're looking at it right now as, you know, as I talk with you guys is because I feel like this is one of the best games to really refer to and check out because it is very, 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 very uh, key. Oh, there we go. To actually start up in like a minute. Let me actually see. Can I see the chat pop up? There we go. I think I got it right now. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, now I can see the chat. That's what I'm talking about. Now I can see the chat for the panel. There we go. So yeah, man. Anyway, like I was saying. So I feel like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is the best example. And the like key example of a competitive fighter that's like been iterated on and stuff where you get a lot of the essentials and a lot of the basic stuff that you need in order to become competent if not competitive in almost any fighting game. For me, Street Fighter 2 is the one game that really started the FGC, that really started competitive fighters. That started a whole bunch of stuff, man. If you're able to see me now, let me know in the chat. I have the chat open here. But also, don't, if you're not able to see the chat, if you're not able to really kind of type in there, you could also send me a Twitter ping over at, at @jakejameslugo with using the hashtag, uh, was it, Uplink. And there's also the Discord that we have for Uplink as well if you guys want different types of questions or comments and multiple spots for you to interact with the panel that's going on today. We go live in like 44 seconds, man. Go live in 44 seconds even though I'm live right now. I'm already streaming. It should be cool. So there we go. Just looking at the stuff as there. So like I was saying, Street Fighter 2 really started the FGC. And a lot of the essentials that you could use in any other fighting game start in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It's the most best uh, edition and best version of that game of Street Fighter 2. Where a lot of this stuff could re really be applicable to any sort of fighting game. And that's awesome to me. That's really awesome. So here we go. There we go, we're live. Right now, we should be live right now. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go, the post is start. Okay, so we're finally live with everybody. So, welcome to the panel, guys. I'm gonna reiterate some of the stuff I just said. And well, let's get started, let's talk fighting games. Let's talk important stuff with fighting games. For anybody that doesn't know, let me actually lower my volume on the game a little bit. My name is Jake James Lugo. I'm a gaming industry person. What's up? I see a whole bunch of people in there. We see Charles. We see Sarah. Welcome. Uh, I'm someone who's been covering and talking about games, not just fighting games, for the better part of 10 years as a content creator, as a writer, as a podcaster. Uh, again, I have content published in places like IGN, Playboy, The Coalition, Real Taco Gamer, Shifted to You, Switch Player Magazine, and a lot of others. And I'm also independent on YouTube. Okay, I do a bunch of stuff on YouTube as well, which if you were at my last panel, some of you probably were there, you saw... All the stuff that, you know, we talked about and a lot of stuff that I do. But anyway, you guys are here to talk about fighting games. You guys want to know about fighting games. You want to get better at fighting games overall. Whoops, wrong button. You guys want to do stuff in fighting games. Now, I'm going to go to training, actually, so it'd be a little bit easier because, you know, sometimes the computer doesn't like to work well with others. But a lot of the stuff that goes down with fighting games, again, could all really be traced back to Street Fighter 2. Whoa, I did the wrong thing, right? Got to go to training mode. All the stuff and the skills that you could be applicable to any fighter out there really starts with this game. Street Fighter 2 specifically, but we're using Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo as the basis for a lot of what we're going to talk about and refer to. So let's just go to a random stage. Let's go to let's go to Guile stage. Everybody loves Guile stage from Street Fighter 2. Hey, we're going to use a basic character as Ryu, Capcom's finest, I like to call them. And of course, Ken Masters, the masterpiece Ken Masters. 
Now, what is it about fighting games that you need to understand? It doesn't matter what type of fighter that you play. It could be a 2D fighter, it could be a 3D fighter, it could be a fighting game that's like a little alternative that isn't necessarily like a fighting game like this. What is it that you need to know? 2D fighters are all fighters, but really 2D fighters are all about controlling space. It's all about utilizing your attacks and your arsenal of different attacks that you have at your disposal in order to do things to hurt your opponent and take minimal risk. This is something that's like really key in order to just be basically good at fighting games. You need to know this stuff in order to be able to beat against your friends, to make it to top 16 to top 32 with people. You need to know all this stuff. It doesn't matter what fighting game it is. It doesn't matter what the gimmicks are. You all have to have at least a bearing and an understanding about controlling space. Every move in every fighting game has a hitbox and a hurtbox. A hitbox is the attack that actually does that to your opponent. It hits them, okay? Like when they're jumping at you or when you're jumping at them, the actual box itself that you can't see that's part of the move right at the tail end of Ryu's heel there is what's going to connect with the opponent. Everything else about you is what's going to hurt you. This is basic lingo. Again, for the competitive crowd out there, for the FGC guys, you already know this stuff, but there are still people out here that might not know that. Now, the idea, like I said, is to have minimal risk with a lot of reward. It's attacks that allow you to do different stuff without getting hurt too bad, or at least putting yourself at risk of getting hurt by the opponent's attacks. Because everything that you do and everything that you are about, whether you're, whatever character that you're playing, even if they're playing someone different, your opponent could do somewhat of the same thing in different ways that are applicable to the matchup, okay? With Ryu here, we got Ryu in Street Fighter 2 now. He has a lot of different basic attacks. Everybody has the same basic six buttons and the kicks and the punches and stuff. But he also has his Dragon Punch. He has his Fireball. He has his Tatsumaki. His different types of special moves. And of course, for Super Turbo, you also have the Super Attack, which does a lot of damage. All these attacks do damage. All these attacks hurt the opponent. The idea is to be able to use them at the right moment and use them without getting yourself in trouble, which is getting beat down. It's the difference between getting scrubbed out at pools or making it to the top 16 or the top 32. So, let's actually apply this to a real match, shall we? Let's actually go to it, to a real match. We'll just go to the arcade mode just to show you guys, again, how this actually works out in practice as I talk to you, okay? These are all basic bread and butter stuff that you need to know before you get into anything else that's really important. Do you have the controller on the back to always prepare to be prepared to block? Because the controller on the back to always be prepared to block. No, what I'm using right now is applicable. This could be used with any controller, but we're using a PlayStation controller right now at the current moment. Okay? So anyway, let's go. Whoops. Let's go into this actual game. Okay, we'll just go, we'll pick Ryu. Just to go to the arcade mode. And again, the computer's gonna be really tough. You know, because all arcade games are really tough because they want to eat your quarters. But we'll apply some of these same things. As you'll notice now, as I'm fighting DJ, I'm trying to do attacks that prevent him from hurting me, but also give me a lot of reward there. And of course, we get a perfect, you know, and when it's applicable, it happens really fast throughout a matchup. But once you do this stuff and you understand it, you start to consciously think about this stuff and try to do things that don't get you into that position like what just happened to me. See, so a lot of it is the reaction. A lot of it is the computer being silly. You want to be able to do stuff, do different attacks that allow you to capitalize on your strengths and prevent yourself from getting hit, which, which if I'm being honest, you don't want that <laughs> and losing the actual round. Because if you take things a little bit too liberally and you do things that are very, very high risk and not pay attention to your hurt boxes and your hit boxes, you are obviously going to lose the matchup. And that's not just against the computer. The computer, one thing though, it's not really the best in competitive play because the computer can react to your stuff. Again, these games were really made to each your quarter. So it's going to have what's called godlike reaction, which means that it reads your inputs and does stuff like that. Against a player, it's a little bit different. How do you build your reflexes, though? You're really fast. Okay. Well, that's the thing. Okay. Let me pause it for a second to talk to everybody. Okay. Reflexes are something that are built up over time. It's not something that you immediately get like this. Okay. You're not just going to eat a super fruit or a super food and immediately become a beast. You're not going to become Daigo overnight. It actually takes a lot of time and effort to build up this type of stuff. It takes a lot of effort and time to actually give yourself the ability to be good. Okay, which is again, practice, 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 review, 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 more practice, more review. I have a question, if you're on your opponent and he, oh, okay, well, I can't read it. You guys gotta put it in the chat. But yeah, I'll just keep referring to the chat for all of you guys to let, you know, let me know what stuff you guys wanna learn about. But let me continue, right? 
So when you don't pay attention to that type of stuff, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. And it's going to happen in a setting when you're playing against another person, especially competitively, right? So let's go back in there. Let's try it again. Let's actually try to implement this stuff. Okay. The thing is, is that a lot of people get very intimidated by fighting games because of all the complex nuances of them without reviewing or looking at the fundamentals. Because before you get into any of the complex stuff, you need to get into the fundamentals. You need to know what's good with that stuff. Okay? And you obviously don't want that. Again... I'm trying to do stuff here, and again, I'm trying to talk at the same time. So, in a situation like this, okay, you don't want to be the guy that just goes and starts doing stuff. This is getting into a fireball fight. You want to be able to use attacks, again, minimizing risk. And then sometimes that happens, okay? If you notice, like, I changed tactics where I was away, where I'm actually using attacks that don't allow my opponent to hit me, even though he has a projectile and allows himself to do different things, okay? Before you get into combos, remember, you want to control space, like what the computer is doing right now. And what I'm doing right now. You want to make sure that the space you control allows you to capitalize on different things while also maintaining low risk. So, see a couple things in the chat. Let me see what's in the chat here. Okay, I'm new to into gaming in general within the last year, so I'll take anything I could get out of this con today and tomorrow. <laughs> well, you know, the con is doing a lot of good stuff for the con, man. There's a lot of great things in here. So anyway... Like I said, we want to make you better at fighting games. So that's the basic fundamentals of all fighting games. It's controlling space, uh, high reward, little risk. Using every tool at your disposal to do stuff like that. So then what about the nuances of any game? Every single fighting game out here has a nuanced thing to it, okay? There's a lot of different aspects to different fighting games that make them all unique, even though they're all built upon the same foundation. When you're competitive, right? When you're actually trying to be someone that wants to go further ahead you want to beat up your friends in all these games and be like you know have bragging rights and stuff or if you want to go make it in like the top tournaments out there like ceo or super battle opera uh you have to know the nuances and from there it comes from actually just playing the game okay like every single fighting game just because you mastered a few different things doesn't mean you're automatically going to be a master at this obviously it still takes work it still takes a lot of stuff will an arcade stick be easier to build skills than on pad no you want me to tell you why because two different types of control styles, even though they're still doing the same inputs and they're still doing the same approaches to the games that you're playing, it really comes down to muscle memory. When you're playing on a controller, right? You're playing on a controller, all you're doing is, again, it's you're playing like any other game here, like in this position. That's the muscle memory that you have subconsciously that you actually do different stuff, right? So at the same time with the controller, an arcade stick, when I say arcade stick, I'm talking about specifically sticks with the six button layout or an eight button layout, which to show you guys an example, okay, if I can make a the little mini arcade stick that I have right here. I don't have a real arcade stick in front of me, but like again, six button layout, traditional arcade fighting stick like this, okay? You could get these anywhere, you know, arcade sticks anywhere. The thing is, is that that muscle memory is going to be radically different. Some people like to go between the two, but if you really want to get good at a particular game, you usually are better off sticking to one when you really want to master that skill and you want to be competent with it, okay? So, like I was saying, two different types of skills, but again, you're still going to have the same approaches and stuff, right? So anyway, getting back to nuances of fighting games. Okay, we're going to show, as a matter of fact, since somebody in the chat mentioned Third Strike, let's go to a little Third Strike just to talk a little bit about it, okay? So when you have the ideas of spacing, you have the ideas of like high, high reward, low risk and stuff, then you get into the nuances where you start to learn the character specifics and the matchups and all these other lingo that you see a lot of FGC cats throw around all the time. You have to have a good basis in this because this is what makes all different types of fighting games unique. Okay? For Third Strike, for instance, not only is it very similar in the way it plays the Super Turbo with, you know, two fighters and the layout and 2D and stuff, but then they have this thing, this gimmick, or this extra characteristic called pairing, which allows you to kind of change the momentum of a fight. It allows you to pretty much, instead of blocking an attack, parry it and then do an attack right afterwards to capitalize on your opponent's mistake. Or their, like, you know, their, their, their kind of, like, unwillingness to, like, hold back and actually look at stuff. They're rushed down and things like that. Let's apply it to a matchup, shall we? I'll try the parry because sometimes parrying can be a little difficult for a lot of people. Even myself, I struggle with it. Usually it works well with projectiles. But the idea, okay, is that you want to be able to do things that favors your high-risk play. Again, even though we want to have as low risk as we can, sometimes it's good to risk going into stuff and be able to do things. Whoops. Yeah, I tried to do it there and I didn't get it. But... You guys get the general idea. But see, they, he just did a parry right now. He did an attack and he was able to do a parry in order to react afterwards, which allowed him to get away. Again, once you do stuff like this and you apply it into a matchup and you practice more often, you'll be able 
to do a variety of different things, and you'll be able to go up against a lot of different types of players and win, eventually. Now, some things that I should mention also is that sometimes a lot of these techniques do not come easy with time when it comes to, like, parrying, when it comes to, like, stuff, and I just did it there, as you can tell, right? These are things that you want to be able to do that is really good. Now, one thing I do want to refer to, and let me stop and actually refer to you guys this. That's also very important. I should have mentioned it with Super Turbo. Combos. Combos is one of those terms that you hear all the time. Combos are basically links between attacks. They're attacks that, like, one after the other, all land on the opponent, or at least, you know, are blocked by the opponent, that allows you to continue doing an action right before you have that downtime where you have to reset. The reset is when both characters or both people are very much, you know, at a neutral position. They're not attacking, they're not defending or whatever. With combos, it's like one attack after the other. You want to land as many combos as you can, obviously, in every single fighting game. A lot of people get really kind of excited when they see fancy combos in all different types of fighters all over the place. And that's very cool. What they don't understand, though, is that it takes a lot of effort and timing and practice to make those combos work. You have to really apply all of them, or at least apply your skills and your time and dedication, in order to repeat over and over again the timing for a lot of those combos. So let's continue the matchup, shall we? So with me, that's a basic combo there, like a two-hit combo or three-hit combo... A link in order to do different stuff. Not only is it to set yourself up for the next action, but also to keep pressure on your opponent. Combos are a great thing. They're your bre they're their butter to your bread of fundamentals. Let me put it that way. You want to be able to do that type of stuff often and frequent, while also being smart as you're playing your game. Let's go over to Yang over here. We'll kind of do another matchup in there, and then I'll switch the game to talk about other stuff with the same type of ideas. And also, let me give you guys a better look right here so you guys can see the matchup in full screen you guys get a little bit of a better view here for uplink we gotta do some transitions and as you can see here again fighting the computer the computer's getting a lot on me i'm playing very rushed down and you want to be able to not make those mistakes that i'm making right now so anyway doing links doing combos see combo right there that led into something like that it was a three hit combo low uh, was it dragon punch into a fireball which is again one input after the other it's like called buffering an attack basically when you're doing like special moves uh, pretty much in street fighter you know you have sometimes when you're trying to do combos between special moves you have to buffer an attack which means doing the motion before it actually completes the previous action which is like that you see basic combo and also spacing here which is what i'm like that but anyway, moving on from there, right? And the computer tried to taunt. <laughs> How would you group the characters in Street Fighter? I generally only play Shotos. Would you recommend... What would you recommend for beginners? I'm going to be honest with you, okay? If we're going to talk, like, you know, basic stuff like that as far as, like, what is a good, uh... What is it? What's a good way to start? If, you're, if you've never played a fighting game before, you never played a Street Fighter game, and you're intimidated by a lot of, like, the Dragon Punch motions and all these other inputs and stuff, the best type of characters to start out with aren't always Shotos. Even though they are basically like, again, the different dragon punch motion, the quarter circle fireball motion, I usually recommend to new players, start with the charge characters. Because you want to know what all that is, for Street Fighter specifically, holding back for like a second, and then forward and a punch button or a kick button or whatever else it might be. Again, that's like stuff for someone that really wants to just kind of start off and getting into things like that, right? Okay? As opposed to doing the quarter circle or the dragon punch motions or the half circle motions which all they are just basically moving the analog stick again i'll even show you guys moving the analog stick like this you know just moving it in different motions like that quarter circle dragon punch half circle 360 that's all that is but some people again they get intimidated by doing that stuff and it's not coming out they're not realizing they're not doing the full input they're kind of just mashing and stuff so to get around that when you want to get timing and quote-unquote execution down you want to be able to use charge motions charge motions are really the better option for beginner players, in my personal opinion. Hey, we're going to get more questions in the chat there that I'll actually be talking to you guys in a bit, but still, I'll actually, uh, let me continue onward, okay? So, things like that with combos or links and whatever terms you want to use, those are very important when you want to be able to, you know, really up your game and really try to actually apply that stuff. And all fighting games have this. All fighting games have links, have combos. Fighting game combos really started out as a glitch in the original Street Fighter 2, which it was like a bug or a glitch with the code itself that links together, overlapped different attacks together. And that's how they were born like that. And ever since Street Fighter 2, they've been applicable to every single fighting game out there, which I'll show you some examples afterwards, right? Okay, so 
uh, other types of stuff that we could touch on, okay, as we're moving on with the game here. And then we're going to switch the game up because I'm going to go to Tekken 7 to show you guys and talk a little bit about how this same type of stuff could apply to 3D fighters, okay? And then we'll come, we'll come back and refer to some of the other questions. Um, the other thing, too, that is very interesting with Street Fighter games and specifically, they have a lot of other nuanced stuff. That's very good where it's like you got things like what's called option select. You got things like, again, like I mentioned, buffering, which is very good. So option select is when you actually hold it and put motion down while doing another attack and then release the button after doing a motion for it. So like a dragon punch, you know, which like what I just did there. So I tried to do it there and it came out as a fireball, but there you go. It's like something like that. It doesn't really look like much on screen, but what I'm basically doing to show you guys I'm holding a button down as I'm doing other button inputs and then doing the motion afterwards and releasing the button. That means that you actually still get that same input. Okay, it's already pressed down, but it releases it and it gives you that actual input for whatever it is you want to do. It could be a dragon punch, it could be a fireball, it could be a flash kick, it could be whatever. A lot more modern fighting games implement stuff like this, but you see it in some older ones as well, like Third Strike or like, you know, the King of Fighters, etc. The list goes on, right? So different things like that is good for when you want to get to real meta play. When you get your fundamentals down good, when you got your basics down good, and you've implemented them into matches or playing arcade mode, etc. That's the type of extra stuff that gets layered on top of that. When you start fighting against other players, especially good ones, you want other additional tech that's not only going to take advantage of, like, again, your low risk and high reward, but also really kind of stunt on them and really kind of actually do a lot of stuff that's really going to take your play to another level. So anyway, let's continue here, okay? Trying to just finish the match up here, going with different combos and stuff. And again, and that right there, what I was trying to do was actually trying to do a combo in order to get it so that way it can link in from the medium kick into a dragon punch into that stuff, but it came out differently. And sometimes that happens. One thing I do recommend to people is don't get intimidated by different things when you feel like you're struggling in the very beginning, okay? When you're struggling in the very beginning, it's not always going to come so naturally. It's not going to always come so fast. Like, you see all these different people in, like, tournaments and stuff, and you get a little bit worried. It's like, okay, maybe I'm doing stuff wrong or I'm never going to get this stuff. And eventually, as you continue to practice, like I said, you end up getting more and more better with it. So now let's go to a different game, okay? Let me also take a couple questions from you guys. Speaking of unique mechanics and uh, what is it? Was it in nu nuances in fighting games? Are we going to see any third strike? Well, you just saw third strike now. <laughs> uh, how would you... A uh, uh, group of... Okay, no, I already answered that. Jake, any recommendations for a good fighting game to get someone into them? Well, again, I would say Super Turbo. I would say games like Dragon Ball Fighters, since that's a really popular one, especially if you love anime. You know, a lot of the anime fighters have become very popular because of some of the popular IPs that come with them. Dragon Balls, Dragon Ball Z, obviously. A lot of the people that love games like Marvel vs. Capcom and Marvel 2... Uh, end up playing something like Dragon Ball Fighters, which is very fast-paced. Uh, another one that's easy to get into, if you want to learn the basic fundamentals of fighting games without having to play Street Fighter and stuff, play a game called Dive Kick. If anybody in the, in the chat has ever, you know, in different places, known about Dive Kick, it basically is it's just a real easy fighting-style-like like style -like game where you uh, constantly just jump and dive kick on the person. And the idea is to teach you spacing, to teach you, like, actual, again, low risk, high reward, uh, the ability to actually do execution, so hitting the buns at the right time to dive kick on your opponent. Those are some of the most basic of basic stuff that's in the most simplified way possible. You can get dive kick in, like, a ridiculous amount of places. So if you really want to know about that stuff, it's some really good things that you could get from just playing that game, right? Anyway, let's go now to the next game which is going to be Tekken 7, so we're going to talk about 3D fighters. And I'll probably also show Soul Calibur 6 as well and the same thing, because a lot of the same things could be applied to that. So the difference between 2D and 3D fighters, really, if you want to be good at all types of fighting games, there's really not much. There's only the real main difference between them is that not only you're looking at 3D models, you're looking at a 3D setting, okay? You're looking at things in the X, Y, and now Z axis. What does that mean? The X and Y axis are up and down, okay, or up and down and left and right, which is uh, X axis, Y axis, okay? So again, X axis, which is left and right, Y axis, which is up and down. On 2D fighting games, that's all you care about. In 3D fighters, this is where things change up. This is when you actually start thinking about the Z axis because you're moving in and out of space. So you got X and Y, and then you have Z, which is in 3D space, like that. These are attacks, or these are things and actions in a, in a fighting game, which not only cover the X and Y axis, but now the Z axis, it does the in-between space between all of that in a 3D game. So let's now go to 
Just again, training mode, just so I could show you guys the specifics of it. And again, this could be applied to all different types of 3D fighting games that are around, right? Let me actually fix this up real, real quick. Okay, we're good. Hope you guys are enjoying the panel so far. Let me know. Any questions or comments, again, you guys can refer to in the chat. You guys can hit me up on Twitter using the hashtag Uplink for the Uplink event or in the Discord for Uplink as well. There's a lot of different places you guys have options to mess with stuff. So let's just change things up a little bit. Let's go to training mode, okay, just to show you guys practice. Any fans of Tekken, Tekken 7? Tell me about your favorite Tekken games and such. So anyway, like I was saying, X, Y, and Z axis. And now, one thing I do want to talk about, which now I could bring it up with a 3D fighter. They could bring it up also in relation to 2D fighting games. We're going to go with Bruce Lee, because I'm a Bruce Lee fan, martial law. Let's also go with Kazuya, just to be my sparring partner here. One thing also that a lot of people talk about that many people don't really understand is this term frame data. This whole idea of like, okay, what is frames? What are like, fra what is frame data? What are invincibility frames, safe frames? non-safe frames plus on frames there's a lot of lingo related to that right frames all that means is the amount of images between each action of a character's attack so basically in 2d fighting games it's all the different drawings of an action so if ryu goes like this every single one of these frames here is a frame showing the action it's a different drawing it's a different picture the same thing can be said for 3d fighting games 3d fighting games have it where it's actually uh, what is it? It's just every single one of the actions, okay, the movements of a character. So again, all those actions here by martial law are all have a bunch of frames in them. There's a certain amount of frames that you could do that actually, or actually show up that are either active frames, which hit the opponent, or passive frames that actually get hit by an opponent's attack. Let me see if I could actually display the frame data, because I know that uh, it has it where you could actually display this stuff. Hit properties, uh, nope, display. I want to see uh, attack info, no. Recovery animation display. Okay, looks like I can show all you guys this stuff. Okay, so that's the one thing about fighting games too, which I should also mention for a lot of you new guys out there, new people. Uh, definitely go into the training mode because all this information is there for you. All the stuff I'm referring to today, you could all be referred to. Same thing with the ability to practice combos that they give to you. So anyway, okay, yeah, if you see this like little blue animation or blue highlight that Law has, that shows the passive frames. Those are the frames that if Kazuya actually hit me after I did that attack, I could actually be hurt. If I do stuff like that, that's the different stuff I actually could be hurt. So if I do any type of move, you notice how I get blue here. I could be hurt at any point with that stuff, okay? And frames are important, okay? Frames are very important because all games, obviously all fighting games have frames in them, the different drawings and the different poses or keyframes of animation. So why is that relevant to you as a player? Why is that relevant to you as a competitor? Because you want to do attacks that have as little of that as possible. Like, you see this, how it extends? It extends like how many, how long uh, Law is blue? You want to be able to have that to do stuff without having so much blue because attacks like this don't have it as long or they have very little startup. You don't want to be able to get hit. You don't want to be able to get hit in multiple times. And my camera just had a little issue there. Okay, hold on, let me fix that real quickly. There we go. There we go, okay. So it's one of those things where you want to be able to have as little blue as possible because the more that you do that, okay, the more easier and the more susceptible you're going to be to getting hit. You don't want that for your opponent. That's with every fighting game out here, okay? It's displayed a little bit differently in, like, 2D fighters and other types of games. But in here, just for the sake of our purposes, that's what it looks like, okay? As little blue as possible. You see? Certain attacks have very little blue. Like, this is an incredibly quick attack. It just is like a flash. That passive frame, you don't want to be able to do that. When you're getting hit, you could be hit again like that. And different stuff, okay? You want to have as little blue as possible. Now, getting back to other stuff that I was mentioning with the Z-axis for fight for uh, 3D fighting games. Z-axis, in how it would look to you guys, is how Law's attacks go in and out of space. This is like a Y-axis or Z-X-axis, different types of stuff. 3D is when you're starting to do stuff like this, okay? Where now, if an opponent starts moving around like this, okay, they're dodging your attacks that are going like that. Let me actually bring it back to the center. You could hit them like this, but all of a sudden, if they start moving in and out of space, that's when your Z-axis is going to come into play. When you want to start hitting them with moves like this, or moves like this, or moves like this, where you sweep them and follow up with other stuff. That's when you start really thinking about, okay, the different axis and the different ways that your opponent can move when you can hit them. 
Not really applicable to 2D fighting games because there is no Z axis, but it's applicable to all 3D fighting games that you could do. So let's actually apply, apply this stuff, right? Let's go back to the mode select. Let's actually go into a matchup against the computer so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Tekken 3 and Tekken 4 are my favorites. I really like Tekken 7, though. Tekken 7 is a great game, man. It's very competitive. It's really cool. You should try out Breaker's Revenge if you want to try a fighting game that's a little easier to execute in. Yeah, that's true. But again, the only reason why I bring up Dive Kick is because Dive Kick is so straightforward. It's so simple. I think this is a... Uh, there we go. I think this is where I can actually choose the single player against the computer, just for a single match. There we go, okay. I think this is also like that. No, actually, no, I have to I have to go back. Because I want to apply, I might have to go to the arcade mode, just to show you guys again, just to apply this stuff against an actual opponent. So we'll just go to Treasure Battle, just to show it again, just for applicable, for showing the computer fight against us, right? It's all the same type of stuff. Everything here, it could be applied to when you're fighting another person. Okay, whether it's competitive or just casuals, okay? Even as casuals, you're going to want to know these types of things because they are very important. It's like habits and stuff that you think about unconsciously that you build up over time. The more that you practice, the more that you apply this stuff, the better that you're going to be. And the much more of a viable and stronger player you're going to be as well for whatever fighting game that you play. After this, I'll apply it to another fighting game, another one that you guys will really love as well. Okay, Soul Calibur 6. Because I'm a big Soul Calibur fan. It's me. So anyway, here we go. We're going to apply this to a matchup. Remember, X, Y, and Z axis. Say Z, Z, or well, Y there. Or X and axis. Different types of stuff. Again, moving in space. Okay, when you move in space like that, you want to be able to do different types of attacks. And I screwed up the combo there, as you guys could see. And it's, of course, as you do that stuff, you get much, much better at it. Remember, Z and X axis, you want to be able to mix it up in order to hurt your opponent a little bit more with big combos and stuff that you can follow up in. And the computer and the opponent is going to do the same thing. You want to be able to keep it up and keep the pressure. And they're also going to be blocking your attacks. Of course, it goes without saying you're going to want to block an opponent's attacks. And they're going to want to block yours as well. So knowing when to attack is always a key thing. That's something that's just common sense. But again, that's a little bit more implied for you guys. Okay, let me just bypass all this stuff. Just do it again in another matchup so to show all of you. Okay, when you're blocking different attacks, it's usually, again, it's either going to be an X, Y, or Z axis in a 3D fighter. But it's not necessarily you, ne you really need to do anything like too complicated to block any sort of attack. The only exception to this are throws. And throws, okay, throws are attacks that can't be blocked. They could be teched out of. To be teched out of a throw, and let me stop it for a second, and I'll show you guys, or tell you guys. To, what tech, teching out of a throw in any fighting game means that you just kind of block them or you soften their ability to throw you. So, for example, in a game like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, okay, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo doesn't have throw techs. It has softens. means that your opponent still gets to throw you and does a little bit of damage as opposed to the full amount of damage. How you do that is usually hitting a throw, which is forward and fierce punch or forward and fierce kick, at the exact same time that they do their throw, within a few set frames. In 3D fighting games, mostly it's games like Tekken, you could tech out of throws. Okay, teching out of throws means that you do your throw input, which is just the two buttons on the controller right here, around the same time that your opponent does. And what will happen is that they'll just kind of get pushed away. They won't throw you. The same thing can happen with your throws as well. I sent a question over Twitter. I've included a Ken Combo video clip for your opinion. Well, I'll have to get to that in just a second. Okay? Since Tekken is more combo and juggle heavy than Fireballs, how does that affect how you play? Well, again, that goes back to nuance. You know, there's a lot of different, like, stuff in Tekken. And I know that there's some Fireball stuff now with certain characters being implemented in Tekken 7. But really, what Tekken 7's nuance, or Tekken's nuances, and a 3D Fire's nuances is, is that you're still thinking about those axes. With Tekken 7 specifically, because it's so much into juggles, you want to do attacks that set up your opponent for a follow-up attack, which is a juggle. In this case, I'm even show you guys, like this. Okay, a simple attack like that. To do a basic juggle, okay? Or as a pose, if I could actually do it, a type of pop-up like that. Again, it comes down to the nuance. It's all about, like I said, low risk, high reward. If you have an attack that's a pop-up that allows you to follow up afterwards, you're going to want to use that often when you can, or at least mix it up with some of your other strategies. As opposed to taking high risk uh, maneuvers and actually putting yourself out there, that leaves you at risk for getting hit really bad because your opponent's going to be doing the exact same thing. 
Again, that's more nuanced to Tekken 7, but if we're speaking in the generalized sense, it still applies. With Street Fighter, even though there's not a lot of juggles and stuff, it's the attacks that are going to allow you to what's called hit confirm. And hit confirm, that's something I should actually cover. Hit confirm, okay, is something that actually has all, like, again, it's applicable to all fighting games. Hit confirm allows you to hit up with another attack after you've landed an attack. That's all that means, basically, right? Let me take a sip of water real quick. It allows you, okay, to follow up with another action after your attack has landed. That's when you get start getting into combos and stuff like what we talked about. Hit confirming is very good, especially for 2D fighting games, because it allows you to do big attacks, do big damage. Like, stuff like this, right? This is a hit confirm right here. And it does another attack, okay? A hit confirm is like that. Hit confirm is an attack that follows up another attack that's hit. It's, like I said, for Tekken, it's a little bit more different. It looks different. Like this. Okay, just some basic combos. Nothing too crazy. Hit confirm. Yeah, let's just keep it again, just to be applicable. Again, do it like that. He's blocking, though. The computer is, like, playing good, so gotta bear with me here. But it, you guys get the idea. Hit confirm again. That whole combo, that three-hit string there. The first attack hit, the second and third hit afterwards, since they were done in succession. Well, again, all this stuff applicable to all fighting games. So applicable even to 2D and 3D fighters. So let's back it up. Let's actually end Treasure Battle. Let's back it up and now go to another game, just to apply it and show you guys again, right? To show you guys, tick uh, Soul Calibur 6, okay? Just to show you guys here. Soul Calibur 6, where the same type of principles could be applied. Okay, we're actually going to go back here, show it again. With Soul Calibur 6 specifically, this is more about weapon combat than anything else, but it's still done in the same style as like a Bandai Namco game. But again, all these uh, philosophies, all these concepts, and these bread and butter techniques, all still applicable, which is really, really cool. I mean, somebody sent me a Twitter question and again like i said everybody could send twitter questions everybody could send discord questions chat questions etc to get your guys uh, was it talk on here which is very cool we got a lot in here which is great that's what i like to see okay everybody's learning a lot if you guys are learning a lot let me know i want to know if you guys are enjoying all the stuff so okay putting this over here okay Loving the panel so far. What is your opinion about lesser-known fighting games? I heard you like Ken, so maybe the combo will interest you with a uh, different, uh, what is it, the Street Fighter uh, movie game? <laughs> I, I'm cool with lesser-known fighting games. Lesser-known fighting games are still just as relevant and just as important as regular fighting games or AAA fighting games as what they're known. Okay? And the reason being is because they still follow the same principles. Again, I love following the same principles if they're applicable to all this different type of stuff, man. So thank you for the question, though. I appreciate that. Okay. But now let's look at a 3D fighting game that's a little bit much more looser. Some people would say that this game is a lot easier to learn as opposed to like a technical button input heavy fighter like Tekken. However, at the same time, right, they call that being streamlined, which means that things are a little bit more dumbed down. They're easier inputs to do to do much more crazier combos and stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean that a fighting game is much more better or not than another one or that it's much more technical or savvy to do that stuff. Let's go to training. Okay, we're going to training. Let, let, uh, let you guys check this out, right? So, just because the inputs of something are a lot easier to do, doesn't mean that there is any less depth with it. Depth is a very uh, subjective thing when it comes to fighters. Okay, so let, let me go to my man, Mitsurugi. Okay, we're also going to go... Anybody a fan of The Witcher? Let's go to the, the Geralt. Geralt's going to be our spar, sparring partner here. Okay, actually, whoa, whoops. I did the wrong thing. I'm going to go Mitsurugi. And I'm going to go Geralt as my sparring partner. Let's go to the Witcher stage just for the sake of fun. Which is this it? I think this is it. Okay, yeah. Because I don't remember all the stages. So there we go. That's it right there. So the inputs for Soul Calibur are much easier to do. There's only like one button inputs and directions as opposed to quarter circle motions, as opposed to multiple types of hits and stuff. Love it. I only have questions for Smash, lol. Well, the only fighter I have right now. So I'll just lurk for now. Well, let me put it this way, Sarah. These same things could also be applied to Smash, and feel free to ask your Smash questions, because these are cool, okay? Now, look at this game, okay? Soul Calibur 6. You see me doing all types of different combos and different types of special moves and stuff, and all these things are still applicable. You still got juggles, you still got spacing, you still got hit confirms. As a matter of fact, let's see a hit confirm right here. This is a hit confirm right here. That's a hit confirm into a super. Basically, an attack that follows up afterwards, and you get a big combo like this, okay? 
That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you guys, the bread and butter of all fighting games, all this stuff is applicable. Let me actually give you guys a better full screen view. So you can see that now. I do have the inputs and stuff on display, so just bear with me. It's going to be pretty wild. So, but it's all this type of same type of approaches, okay? Do this, and then one, two, three. Oh, well, the third one misses because the character is going to be moving. Do different stuff. And again, let's do same things here. Oh, no, that's not going to land, but... That's going to land, but like, again, little nuances that I keep mentioning are all still applicable. So, what about Soul Calibur that makes it good? So, look at my inputs. Well, I don't... Well, you can look at my inputs on the screen, but you can't really look at my hand. But all I'm doing is just hitting one, two, maybe three buttons to do different things. To do different types of attacks. It's not like I need to do a special move like this, for example, to do like an actual quarter circle input. It's just one input, right? It's just all different, like, again, nuances, different types of, like, styles of play when it comes to these fighting games. So look at this. Let's do something fancy, right? Look at that. Different types of inputs. Different types of styles of attacks. Okay, let me actually move him over to the other side. Oh, well, I'm going to restart it but throw him off the stage right now that's one thing i should say also i should also mention before we go any further certain games right okay for example like soul caliber have other elements to them that are outside of the fighting mechanics themselves so they're still considered mechanics but they're still outside of the fighting the actual you know feedback and stuff that you do for example soul caliber and virtual fighter have what's called ring outs which gives you another option to win a match or win a round and stuff and that gets very much more advanced and competitive heavy when you have to start thinking about like, okay, what are some of the things I could do to actually push my opponent off the stage or force them into a position where they're worried about that as opposed to my attacks? That gets very, very much more advanced. Even though, again, if you play a lot of this style of game, that's going to be like second nature to you. But for the people that are just newer to fighting games, you're not really concerned about that type of stuff unless you're ready to look at things like that. What you're more concerned... You're more concerned about not only your execution, controlling the space, on the, all the different axes, uh, making sure that you're having low risk and high reward with your attacks, and practicing again and again and again. I'm going to keep referring to that, keep repeating myself, because that stuff is very, very important. You need to make sure you have a good grasp of stuff like this, right? So, getting into here, let's apply this to an actual matchup with Soul Calibur 6. Okay, let's see if we can fight the computer just so we can see it all in motion. Because I think it's very good that not only if you play a lot but if you also go up against again see it actually in motion even if you're not playing you actually see it applied you actually see it actually happen in real time for you you're gonna learn and actually see this stuff a little bit more often and again I'm gonna say it too just because you watch a lot of different stuff out here okay that's like done by the pros and stuff and they're talking about all these like frame data they're talking about all these different like crazy attacks and stuff obviously you know it's gonna be a little intimidating but you shouldn't be concerned with that that's the nuances of the game, okay? That's the nuances, that's the specifics of the game, and as important as that stuff is, you're going to want to know even more about the fundamentals and have a good grasp on that before you get into anything else whatsoever. That's all the important stuff you got to know, man. That's the really good stuff that's best for everybody, especially for newer players out here. So anyway, let us continue, okay? Let's actually see this in a matchup, okay? Again, controlling the axes, controlling space, the simple button commands... And it really makes it really super subjective, right? So how should you decide your main? The one easy answer I could say to that is if you think a character looks cool, play him. Try him out. When you feel comfortable playing a character or messing around with a character, then you're going to know that's your main. So let's keep it right here. We're going to get these clashes. And again, a lot of the simple stuff that this game has to offer. Okay, so right there, again, you see the different stuff. I'm trying to move around. I'm trying to make sure that I have low risk, high reward, and then getting all the stuff for the win. That's all just simple bun inputs. That's just all simple stuff that I'm applying that I'm talking about against the computer. Like I said, the computer is a little bit different, though, as opposed to a real matchup because the computer can read your inputs. It can do a lot of different stuff that a normal person normally can't do. Okay, so the follow-up. The hit confirm into a follow-up and get one for the ring out. Again, a lot of different stuff that led to me winning the round. And other fighting games that might not actually happen, but you could see the hit confirms in motion. The different stuff that I do. Now, obviously, we're going to get into supers and stuff. The super attacks, the different special stuff that other fighters can do. This game, luckily, with Soul Calibur specifically, it has it where you have what's called a parry or guard impact, which is like a parry in third strike, but just done in a different way. You don't necessarily have to hit... Whoops. 
Okay, let's get him right there. Just to end off the round really spectacularly, right? Like I was saying, the guard impacts in Soul Calibur are very similar to the parries in Third Strike. The only difference is, is that the input is different. You're actually pressing forward and guard. So most of the time, you're doing that action there where it goes, kind of goes like that, as opposed to just hitting forward and not hitting a button. But it's still the same type of thing. It's the same principle. It's the same idea. The same end result that you want at some point. So see here. Let's do it one more time. Just to show you guys again. A little bit much more better. Right? Let's apply it one more time. Just so you guys can see it all applied. How do you compete with faster characters in Smash? When you got moves down quick enough. Well that's the thing. You have to like I said. Capitalize on the moves. And capitalize on the tools in your arsenal. Of that character. That aren't going to put you at risk so often. So if you know a character is moving around very fast, don't do attacks that are going to leave you out in the open. Be more defensive. Be more stuff where you change up your tactics, where you allow your opponent to make mistakes. That's one thing I should have said before, and again, I'll say it now. Sometimes being aggressive like what I'm doing now is not always the best thing. You sometimes want to wait for your opponent to be silly to make a mistake, to do an attack that you could capitalize on, and you could still apply all this stuff there. Again, like blocking there, like what he's doing. And me, I'm getting hit. See? Waiting there for me to do my attacks and I'm following up, luckily. Okay. But it's all about, again, let's see how the match is going. If you have your fundamentals down and you have your stuff on the back of your mind that you can mix things up, you should do fine. That could work with fast characters, strong characters, slow characters, etc. Okay? Just seeing right here. The follow-ups. The blocks. And he's doing a follow-up attack where I'm on the ground. See? Follow-up attacks. Follow-up attacks. Mixing them up. Controlling space. Follow-up attacks. Go straight into the finish there. It's all applicable. It happens so fast in any single type of matchup, right? But it's all this stuff that I'm saying. You're just not thinking about it as much as you're playing. The more you think about it, like, as far as, like, while you're practicing stuff, the better that you'll get it on more nuanced stuff when you're actually... See, and he actually hit me there, and I actually did a mistake. You see, I did an attack, and he capitalized on it. Me not controlling the space right, and did an attack, and I get messed up, and I lose my health bar. You want to be able to do stuff like that. Low risk reward. See, mixing it up. Following up attacks. Following more attacks. Being defensive. See, controlling space. He went for a grab and missed it, because I was able to dodge back, because the grab is so close that you need to grab it like that. All of it applying and happening all in real time, straight up like that. As long as you got that understanding down, you're going to be much better than what you probably are at any fighting game. It's not just the ones I'm displaying here. Let's mix it up, though. Let's mix it up with a different fighting game, shall we? Again, I'm trying to showcase more fighting games for you guys, but let's mix it up with a different one. Let's go to a classic. Anybody an SNK fan? Okay, let me know. If you're a big SNK fan, let's go to God of Mark of the Wolves. A classic. I think this is also one of the games that a lot of people are going to be competing in for Uplink. Which is cool. So if you're a fan of this stuff, you're definitely going to want to know these things. And it's cool because this is a cool SNK game. And SNK follows a lot of the similar stuff with what you get with the Capcom series that are 2D fighters, okay? So, Garu, Mark of the Wolves. Same idea, similar stuff to what you got with games like Street Fighter 2 or Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Third Strike. Let's go with our man. Let's go with Terry Bogart. We like Terry over here. And then let's go, of course with uh, Rock Howard. Okay, so now obviously the, the uh, training mode gives you a lot of options to do different stuff. Let's go like this. Just, or you know what? No, let's go like this to show you guys. A little bit better just as I'm talking. And again, remember, keep sending me questions and comments. So, let's, oh, uh, whoops. Wanted just to stand. There we go. Whoops. Let's select. Whoops. No, I didn't want that. Okay. So let's uh, do this here. Turn to center. Okay, there we go. So let's do that. So here we go. Here's Garu. Looks very similar to Street Fighter as all the SNK games did. Same thing with all the different types of like 2D fighters, Art of Fighting, the King of Fighters, which I'll show a King of Fighters game after this. But this is all the same type of stuff. The only difference is, is that it looks different. It just looks a little bit different, but it's applied in the same way. See? Like the follow-up attacks. Different types of attacks. Again, the hit confirms. The hit confirms here. Okay? The different types again. The grabs. Well, the grabs. Same exact idea. The only difference with Garu Mark of the Wolves is that, again, it's a little bit much more different with the way that it looks and, like, how it's implemented. So, when you start doing different attacks from, like, what is it, uh, Terry over here. That's what I wanted to do earlier, but 
you start doing different things like that, again, they're all applied in different ways, but they still are the same principle. So, going to here, whoops, short ops, different types of attack. See, like this. Different types of follow-up attacks. One, two, or well, it was one, two, and then I was trying to do another one. See, follow-up attacks like that. A basic two to three hit combo that does all this stuff. But again, it's all the same. It's all very similar. It just looks nicer in Garou Mark of the Wolves than it does in Super Turbo. Let's be honest here. Same thing with supers. If I could get a super attack, I could do the same thing. Okay, let me try to do, do a hit confirm into a combo. You didn't see that right there? Let me try to do it again. If I'm doing it into supers because I'm trying to do the input. Same thing. You guys get the general idea. See? Well, hit confirm. It didn't really hit confirm into that because I did it. Oh, it kind of did. But still. The same exact ideas still apply. So if you're competitive, again, in Garu Mark of the Wolves, you're going to want to know the nuances. But again, make sure you got your fundamentals, son. If you don't got your fundamentals, you're going to be scrubbed out in pools and you don't want that. So what are some of the other things that have get implemented to a game like King of Fighters or like Garu Mark of the Wolves? Well, what you have here, and especially now in a 2D fighter, the ability to move around a little bit faster. You notice this right here with Terry? Okay, faster movement. As opposed to Street Fighter, if you remember before when we were looking at Super Turbo, we just move like this. But now, to add an extra layer to it, now you could dash forward. You could dash backwards. Some games allow you to dash forward, just a dash, kind of like this, but moving forward. It adds a whole do new uh, flavor to the meta here. Allows you to do different things. Okay, let me actually move Rock over this way, and then we'll implement this into a matchup. Okay, like this, okay? Let's try to do one. Whoops, I try to do it again. One, two, three. See? Same idea. But now, as opposed to like throwing here, now I could go up here and like mix them up and do different stuff like this. Let's say I do this and I knock them down, right? Then I want to go up on them. Then do this stuff over here. Follow up with some big attacks into something like that. Or going for a throw. You know, there's a different type of like flow to it now. Now I could do different stuff. I can run up on them. And stuff like that. Okay, it's again, different types of movement. Okay, and now that's at least for me, at least what I believe, that's different types of stuff where you're actually to be a little bit more moving around and much more kind of like mobile for a lot of different games. Now, one person did mention the button layouts are different. That's also the same thing I should also say, and I should have mentioned it with Tekken and Soul Calibur. All the different button layouts and the different types of controls you're going to have access to are different for you. It's always going to be a little bit different. But you're still going to be doing similar things. Like one thing that is actually kind of advanced but is also very helpful for people that do play 2D fighting games like Street Fighter is the idea of doing what's called the piano method. The piano method is that when you're actually on a controller or an arcade stick, you kind of piano, if I could show you guys here a little bit closer, you piano the actual input of the type of punch or kick that you want. So if you want to do this type of attack, as opposed to just doing it with one button input, you piano with the actual input. It's like that. Oh, I'm doing like the taunt because I forgot that you could taunt in King of Fighters. But if you want to do that, you could probably hear my actual controller now. I'm pianoing the actual special button input. The reason why that's important is because that allows you to get certain special moves and certain links and combos within a smaller frame of seconds or smaller amount of frames that you normally wouldn't be able to by just hitting it normal like that. So if I do something like like that, again, I just pianoed it right there, I'm more likely to actually hit that combo than anything else. Again, that's applicable to all fighting games that are especially 2D fighters. 3D fighters, not as much. I've heard people like actually pianoing in certain 3D fighters like Tekken and even a, to an extent like Virtual Fighter, but I apply that more to 2D fighting games. So you've got your Street Fighters, your, uh, what is it, Mortal Kombat's, your uh, Garo, your King of Fighters, your Art of Fighting, the list goes on. You Also, your Guilty Gears, the same thing, your Blaze Blues, your Dragon Ball Fighters, the list goes on. Nice tip. What was it, the piano? It Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it sounds silly, but here, I'll even show you on an arcade stick, okay? So you see here, you got your three button inputs, your three punches, and your three kicks. All it is, is going like this. So if I do the input first, okay? Do the input first. I'm just doing like this, like that. For a controller, with any controller, it could even be a GameCube controller, but you wouldn't really want to do it on a GameCube controller. It's just the same thing. Just doing the same thing like that. It's just called the piano method because it looks like you're playing a piano <laughs> when you're doing stuff like that. It's silly, but it's very helpful, very nice, very good. Like I said, applicable to all fighting games. So now let's apply this to an actual matchup. Let's actually see how this goes, okay? Just so we can show a little Garo, Mark of the Wolves. 
And then we'll do one more game. Okay, let me go to normal mode. Versus. I think it is versus. I could do this right here. Actually, no, I actually have to do it. No, I actually have to do it in the other one. So just to go back, just to show you guys. I have to do it in the arcade mode just to make it simple. Okay. So arcade mode, just to go here. Just going to do one matchup just to show it. Just going to skip all this so you guys can see it. Again, it's see it applicable in a matchup. See? Here we go. Same thing is going to be applied. And it's a little harder because this is an SNK game. And anybody that knows about SNK games knows how difficult they could be sometimes to work with. Okay. You do different stuff. Okay. So put pressure, controlling space as much as I can. Doing like different stuff like that. See, they're trying to be a little bit more defensive with me there. As opposed to like rushing in constantly trying not to get hit. Again, let's see it again. All this different type of stuff applied. Doing the piano method from some of my stuff. Did the piano method right there. Same thing. See some of the different combos and things like that that I'm doing. There we go. There you go, for the super combo with the piano trying to hit come from it. I didn't really get a hit come from there, but you guys get the idea. And that's how it could be applied. And that's how you look cool and you win, as opposed to losing, okay? So now, let's back it up. Let's go to one more game to show you guys. Let's show y'all King of... Should I show you some KOF? Yeah, let's show some KOF. And then we'll do the last game that I want to do, okay? I just tried that in Smash just now, and that works great. I have my Smash open to try things uh, that you'll tip us on. Yeah, and again, with Smash specifically, Smash is what's called an alternative fighting game. It's not necessarily traditional like what you would get with games like KOF, like Garou, like Street Fighter. It's a fighting game with a lot of its same principles, but it doesn't play the same. The difference is not to drain your opponent's health, it's to knock your opponent off the platform. The idea is that you build up more damage over time with uh, different, uh, what's it called? With different, um, whoops, I did the wrong one. So actually go back. Okay, go back. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. So these things are like super helpful. They're super, super helpful. They're super awesome. They're great. Really cool overall. And again, usually sometimes KOF games like actually show you some of these like different techniques. But let's go back to our main scene here. Okay, let's go with advanced. We're going to go with Team Japan. Or no, yeah, let's go with Team Japan. Let's uh, let's mix and match. Let's go with Kyu Kusanagi. Okay. Let's go with... uh. Terry Bogart, let's go with Joe Higashi. And we'll just do it here. I'll do like one matchup just to show you guys. And again, these same things can be applied. So let's go with our boy Keo. Let's go with Terry. Let's go with Joe. All these different things. So hopefully, by watching and listening to me talk on all this stuff, you can start applying all these different things to various different fighting games and really kind of like, really up your, your skills a little bit, up your appreciation for them. See? Again, controlling space, I'm not doing it right. See? And it might look a little different than Garo, but it's still applicable to the same thing. Now, one thing I will say, though, that I should also mention. Certain fighters, especially games like Shemurai Showdown and stuff, don't always go fast-paced. Like, they're very, sometimes they're not really combo-heavy. And they're very, like, you know, much more diffused and much more held back. Because they focus much more on, like, again, the more fundamental stuff like, you know, hit confirms, counterattacks. You know, things like that, that's not so much, like, flashy. It's much more kind of, like, grounded. So let's do this with Terry. See, hopefully I can win. Nice there, see? They hit confirm right there afterwards, so even though she jumped, he got an attack off. I love KOF 97, Orochi Saga. The game, the game isn't balanced to me, though. <laughs> the game is fun, though. A lot of these games are fun. A lot of old fighting games are fun. You know, especially when you're being competitive with them. And that was like a hit confirm, but that just didn't land because he was so far fast. See, look at those hit confirms. Look at the controlling space. And even though he's doing like counterattacks and stuff. And he just got stunned there. See, he's doing controlling space. And there we go. There goes me controlling space, doing my attack to counterattack him. Same thing, because when you're loose and you're jumping in on stuff, you're definitely really, 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 uh, what is it? You're really, really putting yourself at risk when you're just being loose like that. So here, let's do one more, and then I'm going to go to the last game I want to touch on. 
Just so I could show you guys again the again, same type of principles. See there, hit confirm that I just did. Even though he blocked it, it's still a hit confirm. It's one after the other, like that. Same thing, okay? So look at that. Getting hit, not controlling the space. Controlling the space here, backing him up. And the hit confirms afterwards. And even though I lost there, but you guys get the general idea here. <laughs> I'm not going to show you guys, me, show me losing, right? So, I need Nork. I feel more confident now to try some of these tips. I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. So hopefully. Let me do one more to show y'all. Okay, just because I know it's popular. Go Dragon Ball Fighters, just to show you guys. And again, what I say with this one, because again, it's very similar to like Soul Calibur, where it has like simple button inputs, but like the chaotic and hecticness is very similar to like a Marvel vs. Capcom. It's similar to like all those different types of stuff. Okay. I love Mortal Kombat though. That's one game I'm not going to be able to show this time, okay? But it's the, a lot of that stuff could be applied as well, because Mortal Kombat is a 3D game that plays like a 2D game. You know, Mortal Kombat 11, Injustice 2, the list goes on. MKX. A lot of that same type of stuff, especially if you play Street Fighter V or you play Street Fighter IV, that same type of thing or approach to it could be applied to that. So let's just go to like one matchup just so I can show you guys how it is with the Dragon Ball Fighters, which is similar to like a Marvel vs. Capcom where it's really chaotic, it's hectic. The only difference is, and what the big things is, is that you could call in other characters. You can assist characters. It's not one versus one. Now it's three versus three. Because even with the King of Fighters, it's still a team-based game, but it's not like you're calling in other characters. Later KOF games would do that. But Marvel vs. Capcom, Dragon Ball Fighters would really do stuff like this. Let me actually go to offline. Offline lobby. I just want to get into a matchup just like to see where is it again. I'm trying to remember where it actually is the, the thing here. Just so I can show you guys. I think this is this tower right here. Or actually, no. It's the battle, the arcade. There it is. That's what our local battle. That's what I want. Because I'm pretty sure you can go up against the computer like this. I'll begin battle. Yeah, there we go. This is what I want. Three versus three again. Same thing. Okay, same exact thing. But I'm going to show you guys now with the application, okay? The application with calling in other characters, which adds a whole other layer to stuff that you got to think about. So let's go with our man Goku. We'll go with uh, go our man Krillin. We're going to go with the Z Fighters. Should we go Tian Yamcha or Tian Shin? Somebody like that. Again, I'm just really quick. Are we ready yet? Let's go with Piccolo. Okay, so we did all that type of stuff. So now we're going to go with against like the bad guys. We'll go with... Uh, We'll go with Vegeta. We'll go with uh, Frieza. And the Gin. And should I go with Captain Ginyu or no? We'll go with Cell. Just for the sake of just showing y'all. We'll go with the World Tournament. Okay, just basic, just again, just to show you guys real quick. Because this is going to be one of the final things I touch on. So, a lot of those same principles and everything I just talked to also match up to this game. But now you've got the implementation of calling assist. Of being able to call in extra bonus characters to help you out and do attacks to also change up the momentum uh, sharing around and like fighting around for space on the board or space on the screen so when you do that stuff characters will come in and do an attack hey look at look at there goes goku okay so characters will do an attack that'll come in really briefly while you're doing your own stuff so you can follow up afterwards or you can use it to get out of a jam against another character different things like that there we go. Just going to show you guys just how it goes. So, as we're fighting here, just fighting different stuff. Let me lower the volume a little bit. See? Go follow up attacks. See, see the character just come in now? Again, it's moving a little bit fast. But it's going to do stuff again just to keep the momentum flowing. But it's still the same principles as you can see here. See? They just call another character. You could switch out characters that goes Krillin actually doing stuff. But we're all doing the exact same thing, as you could tell. And then the other thing that's also different about these style of games is that now it's not just one character that loses and it's lost in the round. It's now a bunch of different characters that are part of stuff. Okay, doing different stuff. You saw Goku just come in there. But again, it's controlling space from a distance. Blocking attacks. See? Different stuff. See? Calling another character. Following up. See? It's fairly simple. It's really not that hard. Now, obviously, it gets difficult when you're actually doing different stuff. See? You can see him there on the bottom. Now, of course, obviously, it's a little harder to pay attention to it with so much happening on the screen. But it's still enough to really, like get the idea of like what I'm talking about see that let's actually call another character and 
I'm trying to actually go into the guy jump like messing up here. Is that all? Alright? Is that all? There we go. Like that. Got him. Again, it just finishes. But you guys get the general idea. All that is still pretty much the same. As you can see here, we're doing different attacks. I was grabbing them, I was doing other attacks, I was getting hit from afar, blocking, all the same type of stuff. Okay? But yeah. So I'm gonna end it on that note. I think that's gonna be a good place to just kind of cap things off. I appreciate everybody for watching the stream, watching the what is it, watching the, the panel, I mean. I always say stream because again I, I twitch stream a lot, so I, I watching the panel and stuff. I, I love, I always have a hard time though because of how fast uh, the game plays. Uh, was it? I always need coffee to play this right. Yeah, it, things are very faster. A lot of different fighting games have different, like, you know, speeds or momentum. Because Street Fighter is one speed, Marvel or Dragon Ball Fighters is another speed. As you saw, Soul Calibur and Tekken are another one. And then you get a different flavor with the King of Fighters. You know, it's all those little nuances. But again, it all goes back to the basic fundamentals for you to be a better fighting game player. So, anyway, I want to thank. A Long Island, or was it Uplink for Long Island Retro Uplink for having me on to talk about this stuff with you guys? I hope that you all do well, well do better when you go to tournaments and actually do pretty right. Uh, was it too pretty uh, good overall? Make sure as you guys practice, make sure you guys think about this stuff, spend time playing, and just have fun with it more than anything else. I want you guys to really, really have fun with it and enjoy your fighting games. So, anyway, that's all I got for all of you. Uh, make sure you guys, again, if you guys want to know more about what I do and stuff that I do. Check me out on Twitter at Jake James Lugo. You guys can follow my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash gamers with games channel. I have a ton of different videos on there, fighting game reviews and fighting game stuff on there if you're interested in that stuff. Definitely follow me on Instagram at Jake James Lugo. And also check out my Discord. Discord is all linked in a whole bunch of different places and also on Patreon. I have a bunch of different things that you guys can check out. There's a lot of content. So anyway, I will talk to all of you again real soon. Peace out, stay epic, enjoy the rest of your uplink. Thanks for watching this video everyone. Go ahead and click the boxes on the side to see more videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to go visit my Patreon page for exclusive gaming content that I know you'll really love. Hope you have a chill day, peace out, and stay epic everybody.